great episode of NXT tonight, and it's basically because of three people. Heavy Machinery, Kyrie Sane, and yes, I will say it, Adam Cole, baby! <laughs> Let's talk about NXT, oh yes. What's going on, everybody? It's your buddy, it's your pal, Spass Phoenix, the YWC Reality Check here with your NXT review for November 8th, 2016. Or, sorry, 2017. I'm not all here. That's, that's how it goes. Anyways, house cleaning out of the way first. Um, first off, I would be remiss if I didn't, yet again, because the world kind of sucks like this, send... Um, my thoughts and prayers for whatever that's worth to the people of the uh, the small town in Texas that I currently can't remember the name of because I'm a terrible person, uh, where they had the the um, the church shooting, which is fucking terrible, where 27 people were killed and 27 other people were injured. From uh, from what I've read, from the little bit of news that actually transfers up here to Canada. Um, there's nothing I can really say about it that hasn't been said by a hundred other people. Or the, the guy's a scumbag, and this is really, really fucked up, and this shit is happening way too much. But um, you know, whatever you, whatever you believe in, take a take a pause, take a moment, think about those people. Uh, count your blessings that you didn't happen to be in that city that day where that particular lunatic happened to be. Um, it's really bad. It's really, it's really shit. And there's not much that I can say to make it any better, but I would be remiss if I didn't, um, come up here and say something. So that's, uh, my measly attempt at saying something about that. Uh, on to a couple things that are a bit bigger and a bit brighter. There will be no NXT review next week because the way the dates work and the day the work dates all move around and whatnot, we should be doing, myself, Guapo, and uh, Kristen, should be doing our dual tackle preview video for not only Survivor Series, aka bragging rights, but also NXT TakeOver War Games. There will be two pay-per-view pick'ems. There will be a pay-per-view pick'em for War Games. There will be a pay-per-view pick'em for Survivor Series, which just continues to change and get more and more interesting by the day, so we won't know what the card looks like officially probably until next Wednesday. I invite you guys all, join us next week. Join us for the preview. There's going to be a lot of interesting things discussed. I'm going to discuss the card with Christian and Guapo. I'm going to discuss the NXT card. I'm going to be discussing a few other things like Jericho, Omega, the battle between WWE and uh, more specifically the Bullet Club. I'm going to be discussing the uh, the mixed tag, or sorry, not the mixed tag, the intergender match we saw on SmackDown. Could we see more of that? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? I'm going to throw a couple of extra topics into that and I'm hopefully going to get Guapo and Christian in on me on those topics because um, I don't do Raw and SmackDown reviews anymore and uh, I don't get to talk a lot about what's happening on those shows because most of the time there's not much to talk about. So um, I think a lot of the a lot of the topics that I would typically talk about in those reviews get flushed out in the tackle, and it's more of a conversation. And I think that's a better way to to get um, random topics across. That is going to be a whole lot of fun. Get your picks in any time between now and that weekend, that pay per view weekend, which is a good ten days away or so. Um, now, be mindful, uh, we could have more matches or more matches changed on Raw, on SmackDown, or there could be some changes made up to and including the end of NXT for TakeOver. So maybe wait until that day to give me your picks or whatever, but please come and take part in the pick'em. Make your, make your picks, rank them in order of confidence, uh, watch the pay-per-views on the night, Follow me on Twitter. We'll keep score. It's all for fun. It's um, you guys know me. I don't do this channel for money. There is no money invested in this channel whatsoever. So there's no prizes. There's nothing like that other than for me to come out here on the next video, give you guys a quick shout out, throw your name down on the uh, auspicious list down in the uh, down in the box below of the pay-per-view pick'em winners from the very first one that is Guapo to Cheney with his three-time uh, three-time uh, what do you call it? 
streak, I guess. Um, he's the guy to beat. Uh, it is a lot of fun. Uh, the last pay-per-view pick we did was really a fucking shit show because Roman got sick, Bray got sick, we threw in AJ Styles versus Finn Balor for reasons, we threw in Kurt Angle looking like a dad hanging out with his kids as far as the shield goes, so that one was really kind of a mess and people's picks were kind of all over the place because of that. Hopefully it'll be a little bit more concrete for Survivor Series, for War Games. Like I say, there's going to be two separate pickums uh two chances to win essentially so i hope you guys will join us for that also as i always say go up in the annotation up above you will see the last ask the phoenix q a that i did in that comment section is where you're going to leave your questions if you want them answered in the november q a the november q a will go up sometime in the week after survivor series this will be the last um the last Q&A for the year. As you guys know, I take December off, although I might be working on a small surprise for you guys in the month of December, but for the most part, I take December off. The last video, potentially, that you will see on this channel will be the November edition of Ask the Phoenix, so please go up to the annotation up above, get your questions in for that q and I've already got a couple, I've already seen them, they are great, I hope we get more. Now, Let's talk about NXT now that I've rambled on for almost six minutes already. We start off NXT tonight with a recap of everything that happened last week. The tag team title match that broke down Roderick Strong turning on the ROH boys, which wasn't really a turn because he was never with them. And William Regal coming out, not only announcing the War Games match, but basically renaming the... Uh, the pay-per-view itself from TakeOver Houston to TakeOver War Games. And they did it in the in the video package and they did it last week as well. Seeing that TakeOver Houston logo that they put no effort into whatsoever because it was as bland as bland can be and watching it morph into the War Games logo makes me smile because it was one of those things where they knew they were going to announce that it was War Games. The Houston logo was temporary. Why are they going to bother putting any time into it? And it showed because it, was, it basically looked like they took one side of a gold bar and just carved Houston in it, which isn't that creative. And I will say, some of the N the logos for some of the NXT takeovers have been pretty great. Um, but it's all good. I still don't get how Roderick Strong and Authors of Pain um, become a team. I still don't know who the babyface team is in this, because Sanity are crazy, the ROH boys are clearly heel, and the Authors of Pain and Roderick Strong are a mixed bag. So we're going to cheer for sanity, I think, but um, but who they're focusing on right now is the ROH boys, and they seem to have a hell of a following. Let's, uh, you know, we'll flash forward to the main event tonight and the, uh, the uh, reception that Adam Cole got, and uh, you can see that. I still say, by the way, that Adam Cole and his mannerisms and the way he carries himself and some of his uh, signature... Uh, uh, gestures and expressions and so forth. There's a lot of Shawn Michaels there. And I'm not saying that like a bad thing. I'm not saying that like he's a wannabe Shawn Michaels or anything like that. Or me, you know, everybody gets their inspiration from somewhere. But it, it's so blatant and so there that I can't not mention it. Anyways, first match of the night is Heavy Machinery versus two jobbers. Now, I didn't notice until the end of the match that one of these jobbers was Sean Maluda from the Cruiserweight Classic, which I kind of feel bad about because I wish they had given him a push after the Cruiserweight Classic, but that just didn't happen at all. Let's just talk about what the Heavy Machinery did to these guys because they destroyed them and that's what they do. Lots and lots and lots of clotheslines and knockdowns by Otis. A power slam, and I'm sorry... Otis Dozovic doing the worm is the, the one thing in wrestling that I didn't know I needed. Worm into an elbow drop was fucking great. He, they, uh, they sandwiched one of the guys between the two of them, and then there's a corner splash by Tucker Knight. Springboard elbow by Tucker Knight is pretty damn good, too, for a guy the size that he is. They hit the compactor, the um, heavy machinery get the obvious win. And I, I like heavy machinery, but I don't know who they're going to feud with. Because we're going to talk later on about who the Street Profits are clearly feuding with, and everybody else is sort of main event level. And while I like Heavy Machinery, and I like their gimmick, and they're a lot of fun, Dozovic doing the worm just fucking killed me. But I don't see them going up against the Authors of Pain. I know a lot of people do. I don't see it yet. I don't see them going up against Sanity. I don't see them going up against the ROH boys. I don't see that being a program that, that works. But then again... I gotta look over to the main roster, where we're probably getting the Shield versus the New Day, which is bizarre and yet intriguing at the same time. Anyways, 
We see a, 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 an interview in the back with Ember Moon talking about Martinez's comments last week that sort of came out of nowhere that were like, hey, you know that girl Ember Moon that I've never fought once and never had anything to do with? I'm going to stand here for reasons and guess that she's not winning at the pay-per-view in the Fatal 4-Way match that has nothing to do with me. So Ember Moon is going to face Mercedes Martinez next week, and Ember Moon cuts a promo in the back, and I like Ember Moon. I like her whole gimmick, I like her presentation, the entrance, the music, and in-ring, she's a blast to watch. I saw her live, NXT Toronto, a couple weeks ago, as you guys know. I still could not care less when she's on the microphone, I, and I know she's trying, and I know she's better, but I still don't care about her on the mic. I want, it's sort of one of those... Shut up and wrestle, because I know you're great at wrestling, and I know you're a great character, and every time they make her look human, it takes away from the gimmick, and I don't know. It's not that I don't like her, it is my point. I just don't want to hear her on the microphone. Kyrie Sane versus Billy Kay. It was an interesting one, and you figure, if this was on the main roster, this would have been a two-second squash, but because it's NXT and they do things properly, then whatever the case may be. Obviously, Peyton Royce is out there in Billy Kay's corner, not only because she's, you know, Billy Kay's tag team partner in a division that doesn't have tag teams, uh, but also because she's going to be facing her at the pay-per-view and it builds the storyline there. They've got the title at the top of the ramp to remind us that these guys are about, these girls are about to fight for a women's title, and we move forward. Kyrie Sane versus Billy Kay. Chain wrestling to start and a tackle by Kay. Hits head scissor by Sane and a drop kick. There's a distraction on the outside by Billy uh, by uh, Peyton Royce. Obviously, forearm by Kay and some mounting punches. A torture rack choke combination. Like she she put her up for the torture rack, but she wrapped her own arm around her throat before she put her up in the torture rack. Um, the guys on commentary made a point of saying Billy Kay's a lot bigger. She's got a basketball background, so she's able to do these leverage type maneuvers to Kyrie Sane. Kyrie Sane's fucking amazing, but she's fucking tiny. Let's be real for a second. Spear by Kyrie Sane, as she hears me call her tiny. Some chops and a baseball slide elbow by Sane, and then she hits the insane elbow for the win. Now, we knew that Kyrie Sane was going to win. We know that she's the one that's going on to a pay-per-view title match. She's the one coming off the momentum of the Mae Young Classic. But at the same time, this wasn't a squash. Billy Kay got some shit in, and it was good. And I really love the fact that I initially was calling her elbow the insane elbow because I thought it was a it was a it was a fun little play on words. But it seems to be literally what they're calling it on the show as well. So as corny as it is, it's the perfect wrestling kind of corny. And we move on. Kyrie Sane, she's gonna win, isn't she? So like, like she's going to win. Peyton Royce ain't going to win. As much as I want her to, my girl Nikki Cross ain't going to win. And Ember Moon is that girl that's always in the title picture and doesn't win. So congratulations in advance to Kyrie Sane. I, I try to say that with as much respect as possible. We see a video package for War Games, which is good for a couple of reasons. It's good because... You know, people in, that are only that are strictly WWE may may have never seen a War Games match before. People that are a lot younger than me that were not around 20 years ago may not know what a War Games match is. So it gives a full descriptor, and it's all WCW footage, which is a, which is one of those hey, glad we bought the WCW library when we could. Um, but it's also some of the guys you see interviewed in inter interspersed between the uh, the video packages, the video highlights. Um, you see guys like Arn Anderson, Booker T, um, a couple of other people, and plus some old promos leading up to the to the show, like a Ric Flair and a Dusty Rhodes and a Roddy Piper and, and a Hulk Hogan, etc. But the one that they really settle on is Dusty Rhodes. They make sure to give Dusty Rhodes credit for the creation of the War Games match, and then they talk a lot about... Um, they have Dustin Rhodes, you know, not in any gold dust attire, just, you know, saying his piece, you know, hey, you know, my dad had a lot to do with the War Games match, he had a lot to do with NXT, you know, he'd be really proud to see this moving forward and whatever, and that's, and that's kind of something I didn't think of before, because there was a big kerfuffle a while ago, and yes, I said kerfuffle, when WWE announced that they were going to do Starcade, and then when they announced they were going to do War Games, um, people were all up in an uproar about how WWE was screwing over Cody Rhodes because they wouldn't let him use the Rhodes name, and da 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 da, -da but yet they'll take his dad's two concepts and use them in WWE. Um, I think this is their way of sort of mending that fence, making sure they give that proper respect to uh, to Dusty, and that's really, really cool. And plus, Dusty Rhodes was, you know, some people have described him as the heart and soul backstage of NXT. So it, to, to carry it through with the mentality of, hey, if we were going to bring back Dusty's concept, he would want his kids to put it on. Um, I think that sort of curtails a lot of people's, a lot of people's frustration with that, with the whole 
you know, quote unquote, they're screwing Cody Rhodes and yet they're going to use his dad's idea. They're not screwing Cody Rhodes. They've got, they've got a loophole to stand on and, and they're standing on it. Plus the Bullet Club is flipping off WWE every chance they get. So WWE can flip them back. I don't really care. I'm going to talk a lot about that in the tackle next week. So I don't want to get into that because that's a little diatribe. And that's a distraction from the uh, what we're talking about here. Anyways, video package was great. Super respectful to Dusty Rhodes, especially with the fact that it is an NXT production. So it's all good as far as I'm concerned. What is not all good is Velveteen Dream versus Cesar Bernone. Guys, I don't care. I don't care a whole bunch. This guy is Cesar Bernone is the guy that faces all the guys that are doing important stuff. That's what he is. Uh, Velveteen Dream is shit, but to be fair, it seems like his new finisher is the Death Valley Bomb, which is basically the Death Valley Driver position, and then he does a cartwheel. So that's something. And then he cuts a promo that nobody cares about and gets what chance, and Aleister Black isn't there. So nobody cares, nobody cares, and nobody cares. We see an update on Ruby Riot and her ankle injury that I didn't realize had happened. I, um, she was in a triple threat match a couple weeks ago, and she didn't win, which was bullshit, if you ask me. But um, she's apparently injured. She's apparently going to be out about two more weeks. And then she gets mocked by Sonya Deville, who's the one that injured her. And Sonya Deville blames her for the fact that she didn't win either. I think it was Ember Moon that won that match. Um, I mean, it's it's kind of meh, because two weeks from now is the NXT that they film before TakeOver, which is technically only like 10 days from now. So it's one of those, the fans have got to sit back and say, you know, we're not idiots, we know you didn't wait two weeks to tape this. But, that being said, all the little piddly, nitpicky stuff aside... If they are going to establish a new women's champion at TakeOver, and this is how they're going to establish their new number one contender, Sonya Deville versus Ruby Riot, I am all fucking for it. And that, if that does happen on the on the show that they film before TakeOver, you know, that awkward, you know, one week late. Um, episode of NXT that they actually film before the takeover actually starts, that could steal that show. And that could be something really, really special if they let it be something special. Speaking of something special, we've got the Street Profits in the lobby making fun of Jabarelli and Gimmick Lost, and they're going to have a match next week. I like the Street Profits. I like them even more if they put these two goofballs in their fucking place. Oh, yes, because I could not give shit about them. Put them, put Jabarelli, Gimmick Lost, and the Velveteen Nightmare in a faction and just ship them back to OVW, which doesn't exist, which proves my point. Oh, yes. Adam Cole versus Roderick Strong is your main event. Now, I like this because you're doing two things at once. You're building towards war games and you're also addressing the whole Roderick Strong led on the ROH boys and then threw the armband in their face last week. You're killing two birds with one stone. I get it. But if you want to really sell me on war games, have all three captains of all three teams in this thing. Obviously, Adam Cole's the head of the ROH boys. Uh, obviously, Roderick Strong is leading um, the Authors of Pain in, and obviously, Eric Young is the leader of Sanity. You should have had a triple threat match with all the captains if you were going to try and pass this off as a preview for War Games. Doesn't change the fact this was a great match. Roderick Strong's wearing a little thin with me, backbreaker, 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 out of nowhere. Um, but doesn't change the fact that it was a great match, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm starting to warm up to Adam Cole and the ROH boys. Um, like I say, he still thinks he's Shawn Michaels, but that's okay. Um, but they could have added that extra element and they could they this could have made even more sense than it already makes. Does that make sense? I hope so, because look, we're going to talk about the match now. Color and elbow type is starting a double leg takedown by Strong, armbar by Strong, and a key lock by Cole. Headlock by Strong, some chops, and they trade some forearms. Drop kick by Strong and a forearm off the apron. They brawl on the outside and there's a super kick by Cole, followed by some good old mud hole stomps. Hard Irish whip by Cole, a knee drop and a headlock. They trade some more punches, knocked down by Cole, who puts Strong in a figure for headlock, which makes me smile. Sleeper by Coles turned into a backbreaker by Strong. Um, can't read my own writing because chops and snake eyes by Strong is hard to read, followed up by a lariat. Corner forearm and a tilt-a-whirl backbreaker by Strong, which he almost over-rotated and threw him on his face. That's a thing that almost happened. 
<coughs> Insiguri by Cole, boot and an Insiguri by Strong. Anything you can do, I can do better. Simplest story in wrestling, and I love it. Super kick by Cole, high knee by Strong, backbreaker on the turnbuckle by Strong, and at that point, the ROH boys say, okay, that's enough. We think our manager or our leader is in trouble. They go in, they make the save. Authors of Pain show up to back up Roderick Strong, and Sanity just seeps through the crowd, and they all brawl. And the very last thing you see in this brawl, if I'm not mistaken, is a top rope suplex to the outside, Roderick Strong suplexing Adam Cole onto everybody. And that's a good spot to cut off a show right there, because this is just a little... And you get the... Ref, or the Announcers doing the very cliche thing. This is just a taste of what you're gonna see Sunday 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 except it's actually next Saturday, <laughs> but um, It's all good and you've got Mauro Ranallo on commentary Who's just losing his fucking mind on commentary as he does and he's balanced out by the almost too calm Nigel McGuinness like they're a good Percy Watson doesn't need to fucking be there. Let's be real for a second Let's just be real for a second. Let's take a breath. Let's be honest with ourselves Percy Watson doesn't need to be there. He is the Byron Saxton or David Otunga of NXT Oh, yes, and I know what people are gonna turn that statement into and and just don't cuz you're all full of shit Anyways, this was a great episode of NXT I actually kind of wish that this had been the go-home show because especially that last little scene there would have been a great last moment for the go-home show, but Next week, we're going to see the Street Profits shutting up, hopefully, Jabarelli and Gimmick Lost. We are going to see Martinez, who's clearly going to be shut up by Ember Moon. And sometime in the near future, we're getting Sonya Deville versus Ruby Riot. Be still, my female pro wrestling heart. I've been Spaz, your YWC reality check. Subscribe up there, talk down there, start a conversation. Keep all these conversations going. Don't be a stranger. I will talk to each and every last one of you later. But for right now, I am tagging out. Bye, guys. Like me